Amazon, the AWS machine just reported Q3 numbers and Wall Street is not liking what they've just seen. The business posted mixed results based on their estimates, but this ultimately sent the stock down about 20% and has now recovered about 2%. So is this the value investing opportunity for us to pick up shares of a great business for cheap or is Wall Street onto something and should we be dumping the stock as well? Stay tuned because we'll answer all those questions and more on today's episode. How's it going? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're having a great day. We'll start with the full analysis of the financials, top line, bottom line, balance sheet, cash flows, etc. And we'll finally conclude with an evaluation of this business using our intrinsic value calculator. And if you enjoy this type of content, subscribe because we post on here regularly. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, so as always, we'll start with the CEO's comments here. Again, always make sure to take the CEO's comments with a grain of salt. But what they've mentioned here is that with the current economic environment that we're in, there are going to be some challenges, but that their customers have appreciated Amazon's continued focus on value and convenience. They said that they're making steady progress on lowering costs, which is huge for a business like Amazon. And they're working on developing further initiatives that will yield a stronger cost structure for the business moving forward. Finally, they concluded by saying that they feel confident and ready to deliver a great experience for customers this holiday. Okay, so they're expecting at least for Q4, they should post strong results. We'll see what happens over the next three months. Now, before we jump into the numbers, I just wanted to point out the historical results of their revenues. As you can see, these have been growing year over year. Great to see from a business. And then as you can see, net income has also grown as well, just obviously not to the same lengths that revenue has. On this right side here, we can see operating cash flows those have been growing historically however we have had a slowdown since 2019 that is to be expected but the unfortunate part is we've seen here free cash flow has turned negative and that's going in the wrong direction so we'll discuss all the details on that in just a second before then let's quickly look through our consolidated statement of operations we have product and service revenues which total up to about 127 billion dollars for this quarter alone this is actually up from 110 billion dollars last year so that's good to see but then we look at their cost of sales fulfillment technology SGNA, etc., all their other expenses, and those are up to $124.5 billion this year from $105 billion this time last year. Ultimately, it's a decline in their operating income. Definitely not what you want to see. And then when we look at this from a nine months perspective, we went from $21 billion in operating income last year to now only $9.5 billion. So it's this has been slashed pretty much in half. And it's the reason why the stock is down, you know, 20% after hours. Deduct our other expenses and we're left with net income here of $2.8 billion. Now, I actually just want to break down how their revenues are actually produced. We can see North America here produces about 78 billion dollars in revenues just in this quarter alone however to produce those revenues their operating expenses come out to 79 billion dollars so they actually had an operating loss here for their north american segment now if we look at international it gets a little worse they produced less revenues than last year and their costs remain the same and that's why they're now down to 2.4 billion dollars operating loss What's actually holding up this business right now is Amazon Web Services. They produced more revenues this year than last year, $20.5 billion. They did increase their operating expenses, but they were still able to produce about $5.4 billion in operating income. So seeing as this is the business segment with the highest margins, we can expect that they're going to plan on growing this business more in the future. Now onto the balance sheet here, we'll start with our cash position of $96 billion in cash sitting there on the balance sheet. And when we compare that to the debt figures, they have about $48 billion in debt. So ultimately no liquidity issues there for Amazon. Actually, they have a lot of cash just sitting there on the balance sheet that they could use to reward shareholders, make acquisitions, etc. But for right now, they're holding on to that with $420 billion of assets. Finally, let's take a look at their cash flows. We can see they produce $39.6 billion in operating cash flow, deduct our CapEx figure of $59 billion, and we're left with a free cash outflow of $20 billion, let's call it. That's an 871% decline year over year, and it's not looking good. If you look at this since Q4 of 2021, they've actually not been able to produce positive free cash flow at all and cash is just pouring out of this business. Now, this is a business that is facing a lot of headwinds. You know, consumers aren't spending as much. There's currency impairments, etc. So we have to take all these results with a grain of salt. We can expect that this is probably just a bad quarter on Amazon's behalf, but we are still going to have to estimate the future earnings of this business. So if we estimate that on an average basis, just like last year, that each quarter they can produce about $4 billion to $4.5 billion in operating income. At the end of the year, they'll probably have about $18 billion in operating income. And if we require a 10% return, they do not currently pay a dividend that once we start to see some more consumer spending and such that this business can grow at about 20 percent for the first five years that drops down to about 12 percent for the five to ten years after that on a 50 pe they'd be trading at about 1.4 trillion dollars now they're currently trading at 1.1 trillion dollars and the reason why i use such a high terminal multiple here is because right now they're trading at about a 99 to 105 price to earnings ratio so we're gonna have to estimate
estimate that they're going to probably trade around that same range. Now, going forward, if we estimate that on the best case scenario, this business can actually grow at, let's say, 30% for the first five years, then that drops down to 20% on a 75 PE. The stock will be worth about $4.4 trillion, so some significant upside from this level. But in the very worst case scenario, not only is their North American segment slowing down, not only is their international segment growing, slowing down, but also Amazon Web Services ends up slowing down. This business can only grow at, let's just call it 8% for the first five years. That drops down to just 2% for the five to 10 years after that on a 40 PE, the stock will be worth $485 billion. And that is really the issue with this stock here. Everyone expects a stock like Amazon to do extremely well, and they just haven't been doing that so far. And with a business like Amazon that has been growing at insane multiples year over year over year, as soon as the growth slows, and we always talk about it on this channel, you know, we see declines and investors and Wall Street alike really don't like that. And that's why after hours, you'll see declines like this with 20% declines after they report earnings. So the investment thesis here really comes down to your output on what Amazon is going to be able to produce going forward in the future, assuming we are going to see an economic rebound. You know, I'm sure there will be more sales internationally and domestically, which should improve the business's earnings and fundamentals. And ultimately is where Wall Street is probably getting this wrong. So this might actually be relatively cheap, although they are trading at a PE of 99. But the name of the game might be lower for longer here with Amazon. And for us value investors, that might actually be a great thing. For now, I'm going to stay hands off at Amazon. I will be evaluating this business over the next few quarters to see how they're progressing. That is my analysis for today's video. If you made it this far in the video and you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.